I do indeed have Vikram Panda, the CEO of Citigroup, standing right beside me here. Vikram, you just finished testifying before the TARP oversight panel. Uh, I want to ask you this question first because it relates specifically to the panel. Were you surprised at the level of skepticism these panelists directed at the job you're doing at Citigroup and, more importantly, Citigroup's mission as an American institution? I think they had every right to ask the questions they did, and frankly, they had to be uh, quite thoughtful in terms of how they probed it, um, and I thought we answered those questions that they had and those issues they had very well. Uh, let's talk about the second bailout. There was a lot of questioning directed at you regarding Citigroup's need for a second bailout back in 2008. You mentioned short sellers. Do you really believe that Citigroup required a second bailout purely because of the pressure that was being put on its stock price? Eric, you know exactly what happened on that day and that week. The stock was going down. We were not the only bank for whom this was the issue. There were others that went through it before. The others came afterwards. But clearly, our action on that day was driven by a lot of selling and a lot of short selling. Uh, Vikram, Elizabeth Warren, the head of this panel, directed some very pointed questions at you concerning the role that Citigroup's playing supporting the American economy. Are you worried, based on th that kind of questioning, that Citigroup is going to be forced to fo focus more on lending in the United States at the expense of its overseas strategy? We are completely focused on lending to American companies, lending to American companies wherever they need it around the world. The role we're playing, we believe, is really critical in helping America's recovery. You know, I know, that we're going to have to count on a lot more of the emerging market consumers and foreign consumers consumers to drive growth here, create jobs here. That's what we're doing. Uh, Vikram, as you're well aware, uh, many of the steps that you've taken at Citigroup reflect the intent of the proposed Volcker rule. Now, I know you're not entirely up to date with the most recently, uh, most recent language, let's say, that's been taken to Congress. But does, in your mind, the Volcker rule address the problems that created the financial crisis in the first place? Many people say prop trading wasn't the problem. You know, uh, we're here because housing prices are down 40 percent. We're here because a lot of people didn't appreciate that could happen. We're here because the impact of all of that through the banking system has created the impact on the economy. Having said that, I do believe that it's a good time to rethink what banks do and banks should be serving clients, and that's at least what we're doing. One of the problems that Citigroup had and Merrill Lynch had as well, as did other institutions, warehouse loans, taking credit onto your books with the intent of selling it later on. The Volcker rule doesn't address that. How would you address that? I have addressed it. In the bank, it's very straightforward, very simple. Strict risk limits, strict risk guidelines. There are clear underwriting standards, and we do it with a view to distribution if we do it. And by the way, there's not much of a market for that right now for all the right reasons. But that only applies to Citigroup. How should the government address that issue with the broader banking community? And that's what you have regulators for. If you make the intent of what you want banks to be doing, which is banks should be banks focused on clients, then it's up to the regulators to make sure we're conducting business the right way. There's a uh, Citigroup stock price continues to remain below the level uh, that it was at before you did the $20 billion capital raise to repay TARP. I'm certain that's a source of frustration for you. Uh, what can be done to remedy that situation right now? There is this overhang, let's call it, with the Treasury's 27 percent yet unsold to the public markets. And you know, Eric, uh, the stock really reflects the fact that government's a seller. And they've made it clear they're a seller. And what's going to change that is if a substantial amount of stock gets sold. And I know they're thinking about it. Well, Herb Allison, as you probably know, said today that the Treasury Department is going to sell it within a year. And a 12 months for somebody in your position has got to feel like a long time. Does that trouble you? I think it is important that the Treasury look at their investment and do the best they can to earn a great return on it, which means that they should sell the stock in a very orderly way and take their time to do it. So it, it wouldn't matter in your mind if it did take as long as 12 months? It should take as long as it takes to make the government the right kind of return on their investment. And Vikram, on the subject of too big to fail, uh, you said in testimony today that Citigroup only needs to be as big as its clients require. But that does seem to imply the possibility that should Citigroup's clients require it, Citigroup could get yet bigger again. And I wonder how you feel that would be perceived here on Capitol Hill. And, and 
at the same time, the clients keep changing and that it may be that we need to get smaller too. So isn't that what strategy and management is all about, to constantly make sure that your bank is serving your clients and is sized correctly with the right capabilities, right products, right footprint to do it adequately? Obviously a question that the regulators and your shareholders will have to answer. Vikram, thank you for joining us. Eric, I appreciate it. Thank Matt you. Matt and Laurie, that's Vikram Pandit, the Citigroup CEO, here with me on Capitol Hill. Back to you in New York City. Okay, Eric, many thanks for that.